Oh my goodness. It's Sunday. How do you feel about that? I'm glad the week is over. It's been a long week, I feel like. Well, it's Sunday and it's already August. I don't know what's even happening. I feel like July went by in like two seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, everybody. I feel like the everybody. whole month went by. Honestly, the fact that we're already in August this year is still sh is already shocking me. Mm -hmm. Like, I know they say life goes fast and all that crap, but I sw this year, the last couple of years have gone by so quickly. So I feel like this year especially, We've been, you know, super busy. I mean, we're always busy. Let's and we're real. just, like, perpetually tired. Seriously. I'm, like, walking around with, like, just tired all the time. Yeah. yeah. We're, like, we're going to sleep in today or tomorrow. This is what we were saying last night. And I, I told her to, to put her little earplugs in so that she wouldn't be woken up. And I think you woke up at, like, what, six? Six. Why would you do that to us? I've been up at six every single day for like the past several weeks. My body just wakes up. I can't sleep past six and it drives me crazy. And I can't fall asleep like yeah. before 1130 or 12. So I'm not getting enough sleep. I'm, I've, tried I'm holding a, I've tried holding a pillow over her face. It doesn't work, guys. No, it really doesn't. Yeah. So hey, everyone. But yeah, welcome to the show, everyone. Uh let's see what we got going on well we're leaving tomorrow um for a little quick two and a half day trip basically to california we're excited about that mm -hmm. by the way if anyone is new here i know we've gotten some uh new subs recently uh i'm katie this is vicky aka victoria when she wants to be taken very seriously uh aka my wife and uh this is our sunday show um but yeah, we're we're leaving tomorrow. We gotta. I think we we gotta change our handling time to two days. I already did um, that. Well, I haven't done mine yet because I still have a few things that were on offers that are gonna um, run out in a couple hours. So I'm gonna change my handling time to two days, and we're gonna leave hmm, tomorrow, and then be back Wednesday and ship on Wednesday. But what are we doing in California? We're going to hang out with our friends Deb and Mel and the the Palm per parade of, of puppies but we're going to see we're big rupaul's drag race fans so we're going to see jinx monsoon perform um we bought tickets in like february i'm super excited she's probably if not my favorite one of my top five drag performers ever and um i think she's my favorite she may be my favorite like i've always she's one of my favorites for she's sure so freaking funny and talented um, so and she super was excited to go she was in Chicago on Broadway uh, for a run um, this like last year. Yeah. yeah, and just freaking amazing. And so we're super excited to see her um, show. But it means we're going to be on a long car ride tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then we got to drive back. I don't know. Maybe we'll do, maybe I'll do some videos for that. Um, we've been doing lots more videos, guys. We had, uh, we even did, we, we even brought back No Pants Friday After Dark. We did. What? I mean, it won't be there every single Friday. Let's no. be real. Wait, let's be real. This is this is us we're talking about here. However, we have committed to doing two uh, two haul videos a week plus mm -hmm. our live show, and then we're gonna sprinkle in some other ones. We're gonna sprinkle little... in like the Friday No Pants Friday here and there. Um, yeah. So, little... no, Katie did not wash the car. A little light Angel. dusting. A little light dusting. Um, and and I'm looking at Don's comment. Imagine being on the mastermind call every morning at 6 a.m. No, no, thank you, no thanks. I'm totally I mean, be I, and in. I love Trish and I love uh, a lot of the people that are on that call. A lot of mm -hmm. them are my friends. Like Jill. Um, like Jill. I, there's no way my ass is getting on the phone, uh, getting on in front of a camera at 6 a.m. It just is yeah. not happening ever. Yeah. Um, but it does happen when I go. Um, when I go to the East Coast, when I go and visit family, I'm usually at Diane's house for the, a couple of days and with Trish and Diane, because Trish usually sleeps over when I stay there and we have like a little slumber party. When I do, or when Katie and I both do. Mm -hmm. um, and if I'm home and on the East Coast, I definitely pop in, because 9 a.m. obviously I'm awake, so. Yeah, yeah so, uh, you know, we were able to get a little bit of work done today. I feel like, man, we're going to get to the last part of the show. We'll talk about our, our goals that we set last week and the goals for this next week. But I got to say, it's like I feel like I hardly ever get anything done. Um, it can be a little bit frustrating sometimes. But we got a little bit of work done uh, the, before the show today. But then we're leaving right after the show because we're going to go see Oppenheimer. So we're pretty excited about that. Mm. Um, I already saw Barbie, so that will complete the, I think they call it what, Barbieheimer. <laughs> 
<laughs> is like the summer Who's of movies. calling it that? Uh, not just me, so don't act like I'm crazy. And I sorry, like you just made a word up. Sorry that you're not cool enough to have seen the Barbie movie, which just uh, passed over a billion dollars made I, worldwide. I deliberately chose to not see it, so sorry. Well, so she, yeah, Vicky's one of those people who's like, I'm too cool for that, but what she doesn't realize is how awesome it was. It's not that I'm too cool for mm-hmm. it, it's that I don't have, a, I don't care for Barbie, so it wasn't a thing. Well, yeah, everybody knows that I'm a huge Barbie fanatic, so. <laughs> I don't know. I never owned a Barbie doll. I don't get the hoopla. It's fine. Yeah, you it's don't, you, you don't have to uh, uh, be a Barbie person to enjoy it. I'm just saying. I I'm am excited saying. to see Oppenheimer, though, because I am a huge World War II fan. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I do like that, and I do like the cast, and it's a three-hour-ass movie, though, I gotta say. Three hours. Yeah. I so better we, have some snacks. So we made I made sure to, to book it in one of the theaters that has the reclining seats, because I'm like, I'm not sitting in stadium seating for three hours, man. So, uh, it's true. Liz, I was, the, I was there for Weird Barbie, because I totally had Weird Barbie as a kid. Um, I created my own Weird Barbie. But uh, I think there, I think Barbie actually has, is coming out with a weird Barbie because of the movie. I think they have so, to because I, I mean, I've, I've seen the clips. I get that reference. But I didn't every single little girl or boy that owned a Barbie do that to a Barbie doll? Like, didn't everybody, like, cut their hair at some point, pop the stupid head off because you know you can't ever get the freaking head back on? I shaved her um, hair into a mohawk. I had wedding Barbie. She had a mohawk. She wore Ken's clothes. And so I was very happy to hear about what happens to the, the weird Barbies. Yes, I agree with that, Don. Uh, I would rather see Jinx Monsoon than Barbie as well. Um, I am definitely more of a gem gal. Thank you for pointing it out, Greg. Those of you that know, know I dressed up as gem last year for the Boss Reseller Remix. But also, I am very much watched gem the i didn't own the dolls because i was probably too old but i was already like in my early teens or like preteen years when gem came out i can't remember exactly when it was but i definitely watched the cartoon and i liked mm. it what about uh frankie wants to know what about goth, goth barbie or metal barbie i didn't have... i mean if there was one maybe <laughs> i guess i wasn't goth but i was definitely like <laughs> but even like barbie and the rockers version of barbie from the 80s no i was not that kind of rocker sorry no yeah what's up emily long time no see um anyway so for uh you know just a reminder we kind of changed up our sunday show a few weeks back and this is what we're doing now we try to try try to keep it to an hour um it still is broken up into three parts the first part we look at our numbers for the last week uh, our gross numbers across all our platforms then we kind of break down the fees shipping and then most importantly of course cost of goods the second part of the show, we look at the sales highlights for the last week. Uh, some of the we cool try stuff. to show you some of the bangers. Some of the bangers. I, I, I unfortunately, can't say that. I, I can't had say that weird. unfortunately I had no bangers this last week, but I do have some interesting sales and uh, and some educational ones, perhaps mayhaps. Um, and then the last part of the show, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we talk about you know kind of like what the goals were that we set last week. Um, if we were able to actually fulfill the, the goals we set for ourselves, where we may have gone wrong, we open ourselves up to a public flogging from all of you. Um, mm-hmm. and then we set our goals for the next week. And of course, we invite all of you guys to participate uh, both in the chat and in the comments if you're watching this after uh, the live show is already over. But this is a great way for you guys to you know have some accountability, kind of put... Put your your goals out into the universe because uh, I speak it out into existence. Yeah, because I feel like you know you're more likely to like uh, actually kind of you know follow through if you've kind of if you've already said it. Although let me tell you guys, I did fail on one of my goals this week for sure. Um, so the pl- public fo- flogging will will take place later on in the show. Okay, can can I go get a I don't know a leather strap or what is it I'm supposed to flog with? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could get the baseball bat that you've got hidden under our bed. Um, Ooh, that would be, I mean, <laughs> don't break into our house, guys. We may not uh, have guns, but we have loud dogs, an alarm system, and a baseball bat. It's true. It's true. And uh, while we are, you know, some people might say, like, hey, you shouldn't be saying that you're going to be out of town. Don't worry. Anytime that we do go out of town, uh, we, we have um, someone to watch our dogs. And this time it's going to be our friend Corey. She's coming and she's going to mm-hmm. be staying with the dogs. So our house will not be empty. No, we um, always have a house sitter slash dog sitter. We can't, yep. we don't ever leave the house alone. 
Yeah. So, yeah, for those um, people, because I, I get it. I totally get it because we do talk about our lives a lot. We talk mm-hmm. about things that we're doing. We talk about when we travel. And the smart thing is to never let that information go public, uh, for sure, at least until after you get home. Um, but because we're very open and honest, we just, so I mean, we have three dogs. We don't put them in uh, doggy daycare. We have doggy daycare come to us. So the house true. is never empty. It's true. Um, but yeah, is there anything else you wanted to say before we get into the show? No, I'm liking seeing some of our old, uh, watchers and followers coming back into the chat on different, uh, different days. We, we definitely miss seeing all these different faces and, and, and names. And there's some new people in the chat every week now, and I'm kind of liking that. It's nice to see some new people. So yeah, I appreciate for sure. it. Let us know, uh, let us know in the chat there if you are new to the channel or in the comments if you were watching this later. Look, like we, reselling rockers is a new name. That could be a, a new person. Um, said they like your hat. My hat. My if you go back in our dance. history of our channel, you'll see that hat has a, has a meaning behind it. And there are uh, several people that are part of the Dirty Diane's club at this point. Mm-hmm. So our friend Diane, who was, uh, who has cancer and everybody who either shaved their heads or donated money to uh, her fund uh, got get to have a dirty dance hat and be a part of our gang. Or if somebody, like I was at the grocery store the other day and there was a weird guy at the deli um, that kind of creeped me out and he asked me about my hat and I just told him it was a band because I had no interest in having a com- full on conversation <laughs> about what it was. But it does look like it's a, a band hat for sure. Um, Oh, I see. Uh, Sammy uh, says they're new. It was James who mentioned uh, our channel in his YouTube. I don't know who James v- is. Very cool. Who? What? What channel is James? Do are we blanking on um, who that might be? Let me know. We would like to know. We love to hear about. Mm-hmm. Kind of I'd like... like to know that too. And then send Sola Sola seller Dory says found us through mm. Nurse Flipper. Yeah, we did do a live show with Nurse Flipper. Yeah. Um, a few months ago we're going to be actually doing another one in a couple of weeks i think tuesday the 15th yeah tuesday so oh i see rally roots uh rally roots mentioned us they're actually going to be um they're actually coming to visit us they're going to be here they're going to be here here. we'll probably do um i mean we'll probably either do something pre-recorded or something live when they're here they're coming to visit us they actually come in on the 22nd they're here from the 22nd through the 30th we have an eight day visit with ryan and ally we have so many things that we have to pack into eight days yeah we're gonna have so much excited they're gonna be staying here with us and we get to do all kinds of fun stuff and taking them around the city and they're our buds yep we're very excited about it um so probably do some videos with them some pre-recorded stuff but maybe maybe We'll do a maybe we'll do a um, no An cast AMA Friday or something or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Should be really fun. All right, let's go ahead and get into the show. I know uh, Vicky wants to get make sure we get out of here on time so she can head on out to the movie and do a little slot playing before the movie actually starts. Um, so, like I said, our first part of our show, we look at our real numbers for this last week, and you'll see that I titled this show "What, what Happened." Yeah, I never tell Vicky. Uh, what what happened to eBay? Because if you guys have been watching, you know, we've been kind of buckling down with this whole setting um, goals and trying to like bring our sales up and stuff. And last week I saw, I finally saw like a pretty big uh, increase in my eBay sales. Mm -hmm. And then it all went horribly, horribly, horribly wrong. Um, And let me show you what I'm talking about. Look at this. It's real sad. Oh, okay. James is my boring reseller. I know who that is. He has long hair, right? I've actually seen some of his clips, but I don't don't watch the channel. I've never met him. I don't know him. So that was very nice that he uh, recommended the channel. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Um, Thanks, thanks, Crystal. Um, Thanks for that. Look at this, though. This is the last week uh, up through yesterday. (laughs) That's pathetic. I know. I know. We actually had, I had a really good week, two weeks, the week before last. This past week was meh. But anyway, yeah. go ahead. So it's funny because, um, so you can see I had two, 10 eBay orders, terrible, terrible. 10 Etsy, nothing on Poshmark, uh, and then three between Grailed, Mercari, and Depop. It's actually just Grailed and Depop for that. It's one. 23 total outgoing orders, just abysmal. That's eBay, horrible. $600, $645.42. Like, I had two zero sales days this last week. It's like, I, I don't know what's going when on. When you have thousands of items listed at good prices and on sale and promoted yeah. and sent offers and all of that bullshit. It's tough. It's, there. Ugh. It's, 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 it's exhausting. I will say it's funny with my eBay cause it's still when, you know, it's, you can see all like your, your different analytics and stuff like that. I'm still up like, I'm up like 30% views for the, no, no, no. 
Oh, my sales are up 30% from the lot from the previous 31 days. So your so previous am, 31 days was just horrible. Yes. So I am still up. It's just, man, this last week. And so then it makes me anxious about like, okay, now we're going to go away for a couple of days and then we're going to be, you know, playing and having a good time in a couple of weeks for like a whole week. So it just, I, that's what it's like when you're working for yourself. I mean, the much. good thing is, is that when we have Ryan and Allie here, they recognize that we have a business to run as well. So we can mm -hmm. get up and do our shipping and list five items every day and then go out and do stuff. Yeah, for and sure. And that's plenty to maintain your business and keep yeah. action happening. Yeah, I just, so. I this is part of like when you start, when you do the work to create a habit, when you have like a day or a couple of days where you have to kind of get away from it to do other stuff, it makes you... You know you've done a good job of, of creating that habit when it like bothers you that you can't keep it up yeah, for even no, just a couple true. of days. It's true. Um, anyway, Etsy gross sales 573.30, uh, grilled and D Depop 155. My total gross sales are absolutely gross for me. Um, again, I understand that this is all relative. $1,373.72. Shipping 10406. Jeez. You can see the breakdown of fees there. And then uh, $90 cost of goods. Thank God that we are going to the bins all the time because at least I'm keeping my cogs down. And uh, total net sales, 1,000, barely over 1,000, 1,032.66. Um, as I've mentioned before, my average sale price has been dropping. And that, of course, has a lot to do with the fact that I'm just getting all of my stuff from the bins. So I'm comfortable with having like lower prices. So I'm totally fine with that. My goal is to be at least over 50, so this makes me happy. And my net average sale price, 44.90. Well, and like Carrie from American Arbitrage said uh, in, on his little talk, but he, he Carrie's a friend of ours. One of the things that he said is just, just take the offer, take the offer. And I'm trying to be better with that. I really am. Um, I mean, I do sell at a higher average sale price as you do. Um, and my items are unique, so I don't have a ton of competition, so I don't have to worry about that racing to the bottom and, and, and stuff like that. But when sales are slow, and when you're getting your cost of goods very inexpensively, and you're trying to churn more inventory and more items, it is better to take the damn offer. And I'm trying to get better at it. Yeah. I really am. I'm taking those 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 dollar offers on things that I would never sell for below 50 dollars six months ago. Well, and I appreciate now that they tell you if it's from a promoted listing and you're going to be charged. Well, all certain... of my stuff is promoted, so. Right, but sometimes you sell. You... Yeah. Okay, sometimes, occasionally, hear me out here, not 100 percent of my sales are from promoted listings. No, but like so. 70. so... Right. Percent. So what I'm saying is if I get an offer and it's lower than what I normally would want to take, but then I see, oh, it's not from a promoted listing, so you're not going to take another chunk out of it. And if it says that's going to get paid for immediately instead of saying it's going to take four freaking days, um, I'm more likely to take a lower offer. That's especially. true. That's true. Um, I will say there was something I accepted the other day and it was probably $10 less than I would have wanted to say yes to. But again, it did not show that it was from a promoted listing and it was going to be paid immediately. Guess what? It was from a promoted listing. For whatever reason, it did not tell me when I accepted it. Mother effer. And it, so I, they took an extra like five bucks and I'm like, whoa. Anyway. Listen. I was irritated. Uh, listen, Angel, you're not getting the dog. I love you. <laughs> if Katie and I both die in a horrible car accident, I promise that you can have Ripley. How's that? Maybe I have we'll, other we'll plans. Will you Ripley? No, you don't. <laughs> All right. Next up. Let's look at your picture. Your All right, numbers. this is a little bit better, but not as good as it was last week, although it's not horrific. It's not making me want to jump off a cliff, okay? So <laughs> 29 eBay orders, uh, seven on Etsy, three on Poshmark. I don't know what's happened to Poshmark in the last six weeks for me. It has died, but uh, it is what it is. And two on Macari, also pretty quiet. I didn't have any private orders this, this week. I didn't uh, post anything in any of my uh, the groups that I'm in. So total of 41 outgoing orders. I did just under 1600 on eBay, a little bit better than it has been, but not great. Etsy, it's a good week. 635 on Etsy. I think I did over 700 on Etsy last week, so that's good for me. Mm -hmm. uh, $61 on Poshmark, guys. Yeah, I was like... orders, are you kidding me? When I was filling this out, I was like, is that? did she forget to put a zero in there? Yeah, because... no, because normally my Posh is like five to $700 a week, and it's been under $200 for like the last four weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway... Total of 2362. I'm rounding up. Don't at me, Teresa. She's at a Red Sox game right now in, on the East Coast, so she's not going to be watching this. Uh, my total shipping, 239. I did have a bunch of international orders this time, so that was pretty good. Um, on, on eBay? On, no, on Etsy. I did have a couple on eBay that went through the new international, okay. but yeah. 
I mean, that's not, doesn't cost me more. Anyway, cost of goods low because as you know, I'm a cheap ass. So $109 cost of goods, which means my total net is $17.45 and change. And my gross average sale price is right where I want it to be between $50 and $60. Uh, so. I would just like to point out my cost of goods lower than your cost of goods. Of course, you did sell a lot more, but whatever. We're gonna, we're not talking about that. Oh, we're not going to talk about um, that. So I just want to acknowledge that there is a battle happening in the chat right now over who gets to the, gets the dogs. Liz Liz did because uh, we know my daughter doesn't want the dogs, and Katie doesn't have any other kids. So we we leave my kid. My daughter gets everything else if we both die. However, the dogs, nah, she's probably not going to care much. Liz more. is saying if we die in a plane crash, she gets the dogs. Apparently, she wants all of them. I don't know. But what's really important that I need to point out, Angel, your wife is telling you. You can get your own freaking Ripley. So why don't you listen and get yourself Serious, a Serious, get yourself a Chawini. Get your, yeah. You know you like the Dachshund and you know you love Ripley and then they can have play dates and you guys can come over and hang out more. Yeah, but I guess uh, Angel has already gotten the lawyers for him and Ripley, which I, I don't know. I feel very uncomfortable right now. I feel like we need to keep an eye out. Good thing we have cameras here. Seriously. Um, I don't know. Good. Don't Please don't give, uh, we can't give Angel a key to the house. <laughs> no, we can't. Uh, We're going to come home and the dog will be gone. By There'll the be way. a ransom note somewhere on her bed. <laughs> I had, so by the way, we got to go, the, the video that comes out tomorrow, you'll see uh, a little bit about um, uh, us going and having lunch with, with Angel and Crystal. We went to Taco E Hot Dog Sonora. It was delicious. It was very good. So that was fun. Mm -hmm. um, that video will go up tomorrow. But um, let's see. Uh, what was, I went, there was a question I wanted to answer or something I wanted to say. Um, who picking? Oh, who did oh. it? Said another bin challenge, please. It was entertaining at least half a day. You know, I think we, we can do that. We could do a half day one. Yeah, either half a day or at least like the first few hours or whatever. Kind of like what we did when, uh, basically, we could just invite whoever wants to join us first thing at the bins and you know, have it just be a thrifty yeah, challenge. Yeah, we did it when we had a meetup and it was fun. And, you know, a lot of people enjoyed it yeah. because we have a, a lot of resellers here in Vegas. And some of you guys know. Um, I run the local meetup here in town and, um, you know, we have a lot of people that come and then we have people that don't come, but whatever. We, it's a lot of resellers in town yeah. and we have a good um, group of friends that is, has come out of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I just saw, we're, we're, oh, there we go. I just saw Kristen pop in. What's up, Rural Squirrel? Hey, 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 girls. What's up, Kristen? Hey, I was just talking to Liz earlier today. I'm about to book my trip for, to Denver for September. Ooh. So I, that just all rhymed. I'm not sure when your thing is that you go to. I think it's in September. So I'm hoping it's not the same, um, same week that I'm going to be there. Anyway, I'll let you know. Oh, now Rita's jump in, jumping in. Oh, the oh okay. Now we got, <laughs> there's going to have to be a bidding war for Ripley. <laughs> Uh, Liz and Angel have cut our uh, brake lines. Maybe we should. And, Liz, and Angel's telling us we need to fly Frontier Airlines in case there's a plane crash. Maybe we should do, if we were smart about it, we would do some sort of like, I don't know, IPO or take Ripley public, basically sell shares. So we get the money now. Oh, that's and it's smart. just like when we die, it's like smart. depending on the amount of money that you invest is how much time you get with Ripley. And she'll just get to go on, you know, visit different people. I, I and... don't, I'm not letting my dog go visit people. Okay, then how about this? They invest and in, uh, the shares give them uh, lottery uh, numbers or something like that. So the more you invest, the more like hmm. potential you mm -hmm. have to be able to win. That's what do you okay, think about that? Maybe. I'm trying to figure out how we can get money out of it. Oh, Everybody I mean, loving our dog. We've got to monetize I mean, I don't want to die, but, but at least this way we can get we something out of it like, well, while we're still alive. That's I mean, true. come on. That's true. I didn't see Jujasso said Ryan uh, recommended our, the channel. He does that frequently, actually, both Ryan and Ali. Yeah. They're sweet. Uh, the goat of quilt blankets. It's true. <laughs> it's true. I do love me some quilts. And you'll see, actually, in my solds this week, I have a few more. Yeah, she does. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get into the second part of our show and look at our sales highlights for the week. And as usual, we're going to start with Vicki. Uh, what do you got here, Vicki? What's, what's going on here? So this is a, just like a, an open front robe that I had picked up. It's silk. It's heavyweight silk. I picked this up at the bins. So it has a hole in the back. You can actually just see it, it has these big wide kimono sleeves. No belt and no belt loops. Oh. It was just this, it's almost like a smoking jacket, but it was full length. I mean, you really could have, it had a bit of, the way the collar looked, it looked a little bit like a kimono. Uh, it had like the kimono flaps the sleeve, and the kimono the, sleeve, yeah. but it wasn't quite a kimono. I just picked it up, A, because it was silk, so it was nice fabric, but, um, and clearly vintage. No tags or anything like that. It just had a fun pattern. It looked a little bit like psychedelic, like, right? It looks like it has... 
Oh, it looks like it's moving almost. I actually grabbed this for you at the bins, and now I know that next time I would just keep it for myself. He's such an asshole. <laughs> anyway, I took an offer on this. I had this listed for maybe 24 hours, and I took an offer for 65 bucks. I was like, yeah, I paid like under a dollar, under $2 because it was under a pound. So <laughs> Matt says, Ripley NFT. <laughs> Good idea, Matt, except I can't draw, so we're kind of screwed. I have to create some kind of mixed media it can art. Be a photograph. With you don't have yes. to draw. NFTs don't have to be drawings. Um, so, okay. yeah, so pick up the weird, pick up the unusual, pick up things that are, you know, good patterns, nice fabrics. You can tell it's good quality construction, and you don't always have to know what the hell it is. Yeah, very Just true. Just throw some, you know, keywords up there and pick a price. Yep. All right. First up for me. Oh, dang, yeah, but I didn't move. Anyway. Uh, so, this is not really like, oh, look at this amazing sale I had. This is something I picked up at the bins. And, you know, I, I was like, oh, this is interesting. And I saw that it had like some staining and I'm like, well, hopefully that'll come out when I wash it. And so I had washed this and bleached it and washed it again. And as you can see, it did not work. Look at this on the sleeve here. Um, so it was pretty stained. It's got all these marks on it and everything. And I was like, well, that was a big, a huge waste of money. And so I went ahead and listed it anyway. And it actually sold, it's like I always say, it's like the things I regret picking up, I swear, are the things that sell the fastest. Somebody made an offer for $28, and I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm going to sell this for $28. Because you were ready to chuck it instead of listing it. Yeah, I was, like, so annoyed with myself. But it, this makes me more likely to, like, want to take those risks. Because it's like, you know, I'm paying a dollar, dollar fifty for it at the bins. Like, if I can make even 10 15 bucks on a mistake, something I shouldn't have grabbed mm -hmm. because it's going to look like this, that makes me happy. It's like right, not that's out. what I do. I try to list it uh, lower rather than chuck it. I mean, there's some things, forget it, I need to chuck. Like, I talked about this um briefly that I had purchased some plus size jeans at the bins the other day, like uh, Lane Bryant, big girl jeans. They sell well. However, I did not, they were nicely, they were clean and folded neatly. So I kind of just grabbed the stack and my mistake, I did not look them up, look at them before. I just, I'm like, did you buy these with your eyes closed? What happened? They were completely <laughs> blown, blown out in like the thigh, the inner thigh. You know, let's face it. I'm a chubby girl. I can say this. We get chub rub, right? So your thighs rub together. And if, and those of us that know what I'm talking about, know what I'm talking about. So when you have, um, you know, it, that's where jeans wear out and like the crotch yeah. and the inner thigh and they, so I don't, my jeans don't wear out, but, but I, not, that not entirely did. sure you actually looked at them. I, I really did not. And then, so, and then they were, because they were jeans and they were big, they were kind of heavy. I probably paid $4 a pair and had to throw away 15 bucks yeah. worth of shit. Well, it, it, it's funny because there's certain things like, like Vicky's like much neater than I am. She keeps things a little bit, you know, I'm much more cluttery and I'm, stuff. I'm, yeah. But I'm, there's certain things where it's like I'm more meticulous and she's kind of like when she's in the middle of it, she's kind of just throwing stuff everywhere. And that's how she is at the bins. Like the majority of the time she forgets to go back through her cart or she her cart's so full that she's just like, whatever, and then just goes. And I buy everything. And then she's mad because. And then I come home and shit's and then every up. time she's mad that she has to throw stuff away. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't, you just. It's not like just go through. I it. have like a two percent attrition rate every time I come home from the bins. Like two percent just goes straight in the freaking trash. And then there was like a t shirt that she had found that she was gonna give to me and it was like she was mad at me that she forgot to actually give it to me and she paid for it. And I'm like, I didn't even know about this t shirt. Like you didn't have to buy it. Uh, whereas I'm like I go through every piece and I fold it up and Yeah, sure. No. That ain't happening. Ridiculous, ridiculous. Uh Angel says thick thighs save lives. Damn Very straight true. they do. Very true. Okay. Uh, let's get back to the next item. And I for see, you. I see Liz is like wielding her authority and just, uh, <laughs> silencing everyone in the chat willy nilly. Uh, sorry. Sorry, Quarry. <laughs> oh man. She should be able to come back. It's 300 seconds. Anyway, what do you got here? Uh, this, I actually picked this up at the bins. So this was probably a $2 purchase. Just vintage this sold for the price you see there i had it listed for maybe i don't know four or five months nothing uh super long not for vintage for anyone that's new in the chat i sell primarily vintage and when something if something sells within six months that's actually pretty fast um because vintage does is long tail and does wait for a specific buyer and it's why when you're someone that sells specifically vintage clothing you tend to have and need to have a much larger inventory to always be turning items over mm -hmm. so uh, it's so I paid like two or three bucks for it and it was in beautiful condition and there you go very nice very nice yeah it's really pretty and just make sure you lose all the the good 
keywords. Like this is perfect for a very simple wedding dress that someone may want to wear, um, you know, wants to wear vintage clothing. I don't sell a lot of wedding dresses in general because they do take up a lot of space. They are hard to sell. Most people want to purchase a brand new wedding dress. But when you're looking for vintage, these shorter dresses or the mod dresses, they sell very well and they don't take up as much space. Yeah. So keep an eye out for those. Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to start buying those now. Yep, um, I'm going to punch you right in the mouth hole. <laughs> Knock your teeth right out. All right. So this one, the reason why I think this one's interesting is, is you know, I, I, I definitely want to buy mostly vintage. Like, that's always what I'm looking for is vintage. Um, but sometimes stuff can sell for decent prices, even if it's not vintage for whatever, you know, for different reasons. And this was one I grabbed. I'm like, okay, I know LSU has a very rabid fan base. Um, they're, they're very, very loyal fans, any, pretty much any, uh, sport, any team in Louisiana, it's like that. I feel like, um, I think anyway. Southern sports in general. Yeah. So I'm from new England. Of course, uh, we have all the, the new England teams, all the Boston teams, He's super rabid fans, but not as much. So for college teams, college sports, nobody really gives a shit about new England. I mean, yeah. Like they're empty. The tickets are cheap. Like college sports and high school sports and things like that are big. In the South. In the South, for sure. Yeah, so I grabbed this. Friday Night Lights? Come on, man. So this was from 2009. And, I, you know, I didn't look. I, generally, unless something weighs really, weighs a lot, I'm not going to look up most stuff that I pick up at the bins. But, um, and so I did not look this up or anything like that. But I thought it was a really cool graphic. And it's got, uh, it's like 12 most wanted LSU football. And this is like the front says new sheriff in town. I'm assuming it was like a new coach they got or something like that. Um, you know, it was kind of worn and faded. This is when I definitely had to like wash it and bleach it and do all that stuff. Um, but I thought because of the graphic, I thought I'm going to get this and it sold within like a week or so. And somebody sent me an offer for $40. And even though normally when I have it at this price point, my lowest is 50, I was like 40 bucks. I got it for a dollar. It's not even vintage and it's just a cool t-shirt. So sold it for $40. Um, I, I'm loving this whole, like, <coughs> bless you having to pay barely anything. <laughs> you're loving you. you're loving the sourcing on the cheap, huh? Absolutely. And it does it really does make it a lot make things a lot more flexible when it comes to accepting offers and mm -hmm. knowing I can just go back anytime and just load up a more I've stuff. I've always been pretty stubborn about my prices and I know you are too. Thank, thank you for the blessings everyone <laughs> as I'm sneezing all over the microphone. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I've always been been like very conscious and trying to keep my average sale price up higher and that kind of thing. We've always talked about this. We'd like to work smarter, not hotter, harder. I don't want to ship 500 items on a Monday at, you know, $4 profits a piece. But the thing is, is that you just got to kind of always be working right now. You've got to do what you got to do to, yeah. to bring in the cash. I mean, you know, summer is slow in general for people that sell primarily clothing. Um, summer slowdown is a real deal. It's not just a fallacy or a myth. Depending on the categories you sell in, you may never see a slowdown and good for you if you don't. But for the most part, if you sell clothing, um, and, and things like this, you do, you do see a slowdown in the yeah, summer. For so sure. you want to just drum up as much as possible. Uh, I see Judy says this is her first live with us. She clicked because of the title. I was hoping she could find out why eBay and Posh was so, so slow. You know, it's funny because, yeah, Vicky's uh, Posh, we were talking about the whole, my clickbaity title, which Vicky has been harassing me to be better at so, so we can draw people in. So hopefully you don't feel duped, Judy, but we were talking about it for sure. Uh, because my sales, I had two zero sales days on eBay. My, they dropped dramatically. It's, it can be really frustrating when you feel like you're putting in the work and then it's just like crickets and then you'll run and then you'll have a week where it's amazing and then crickets again. So it doesn't, I don't, you know, people will say the thing of like, oh, you're just not selling the right stuff. I don't know what the deal is with eBay. I feel like it's a lot of it is search related. Yes, there's summer slowdown, but when it's so erratic and uh, it's, this is mostly it's search tough. related. This and is, then, and then you have your posh dropped really bad as well. Mm -hmm. So, Judy, you're not alone. Yeah, I was two to three thousand dollars a month on posh fairly consistently for the past year and a half. And honestly, if I hit a thousand dollars in July, I think, I don't know. I mean, I did actually add up all of my sales. As much as we've been bitching about sales, I will say I added up all of my sales for July, and I don't normally do that in that manner. But I added up all of my sales for July, and I did gross just about ten thousand dollars in However, July. However, on, across all the platforms. However, um, you know, cost of cost of everything is higher, right? Yeah. So your fees are higher now than sure. they were, and shipping is higher than it used to be. But that's also without so, like having your stuff being cross posted right now, because uh, right, because my friend Robin and... is the one that does my cross posting, and I haven't had anything cross posted yeah. in a month. 
But, so. um, and the other funny thing about Poshmark is yesterday, you know, I, I added Poshmark recently, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, I was saying to Vicki yesterday, I'm like, man, I added Poshmark and the first week I had like an $80 sale and I was like, woohoo. And then it was like nothing after that for like weeks now, nothing on Poshmark. And then this was yesterday I said this. And then today, this morning, I had two sales on Poshmark, you guys. I've already sold $170 today on Poshmark. So, well, my last week. What's your been... bitching? I know. It just tells me we're going to get into this more here when we get to the third part of the show. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, And seriously. I see Biscuit Butt. Oh, Archie, thanks for joining the chat. Biscuit Butt, Archie is a local reseller that we met briefly at the Trash to Cash thing. Uh-huh. And uh, I think he said he was coming to the reseller remix, so we hope we see you. Well, he's saying um, during slow times, it's important to keep listing um, if anything, we're ahead of the game for Q4. That's why I always say, 100%. Too. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I agree with that. You just got to keep listing. When you're not shipping, keep listing. The, it's, it's tough, though, because it's funny. Vicky's like kind of being overrun by with inventory right now because she's been pushing so hard and getting so much more stuff listed. Um, but hopefully that means in Q4 she'll she'll have some really great sales. The the hard part about that is when you do reselling for a living, when sales are bad, it's re, sometimes it can be hard to get motivated, which is why we're doing this whole weekly show where we're talking about our goals and stuff like that and reporting back. Because sometimes, you know, if you're not feeling motivated, you need other influences to kind of make you want to keep on top of things. Exactly, um, exactly. Oh, and uh, Archie, I don't know if you are in, I just want to join this, put this in, out there while he's in the chat. Uh, if I don't know if you're in the local meetup group or not. If you're not, please send me a message through Instagram or something. I'll add you to our local meetup group. You should come. And, and I don't, I'm not super consistent. I don't do it every single month. But we do have one coming up in August when Ryan and Allie are here that we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And we'd love to have you come. So, yeah. Um, um, hey, Patty. She says we should open restaurants. Yeah, that would be. I'd have to cook. I'd have to cook then. Blech. That's true. Uh, so, also, um, I see Danica's in the chat. Uh, so, of course, our good friend Danica, who we love, 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 love. And uh, Kristen says, I love things that get me motivated and focused. Seriously. Um, Speaking of, if you're not watching or you're not following Kristen, Rural Squirrel, on Instagram or YouTube, you should be. Mm -hmm. She's super upbeat and motivating. And she does a Motivational Monday post on Instagram every Monday. And she just, you make me smile. I watch it every Monday. You do make me smile. She's so fun and sweet. And I'm so glad that we've gotten to know her. Um, and she's going to be speaking at the Boss Reseller Remix. What? Yes, with the other half of the Let's Do Lunch podcast, Angie, and uh, we're really looking forward to hearing what they have to say and show us. So very cool. All right, what do you what do you got? What's your what's this? So this is we're talking about linens. We're talking about linens and quilts. Okay, so I actually sold this quilt and another one. I don't know if you put them back to back to the same buyer. So uh, I did take an offer for ninety five dollars on this, and then the other one they paid full price for. I shipped them together. I did discount the shipping. Um, actually, I didn't discount the shipping. Let me let me correct myself because I undercharged for shipping anyway. I knew this was going to cost me well over eight dollars. Well, yeah, eight fifty five for a whole quilt. Quilt right, size. right. And and the other one I charged the same thing. So I actually lost about ten dollars on shipping. But I'm perfectly happy to lose ten dollars on shipping. I buy these at the bins. Our bins have removed all of our linens. There will be no more linens. Another reason why I'm coming. Why? Kristen, yeah. watch out. I'm going to be hoarding the linen bins in Denver the whole time. Get the she F might, out. She, I may, she I says may you make her happy and you make her smile, and then she's going to start punching you if you go near the linens. I may throw an elbow or two. I mean, I'm only there for a couple of days. Get out of my way. Uh, anyway, so I probably paid like 7 or $8 for each of these based on weight. They're 3 to 4 pounds a piece, that type of thing. So um, this is one of them. It actually has some flaws, as you can see. I do launder everything because we actually have a front load washing machine. We're able to fit these big bulky quilts in and wash them. Um, so I do wash them and I do stain treat them if they're stains. Mm -hmm. um, but these, I just disclosed what was going on. And uh, anyway, so I, I said $95 on this one. And then the other one, I think I sold for the 116 and change. Um, so I was pretty happy to sell two quilts for $200 that I probably paid combined 15 bucks for. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Uh, next up, I've got this Carter's puffy vest, puffer vest. Um, again, I got this at the bin. So it was pretty lightweight. So it's like, I can't imagine I paid more than like $2 for it. Um, and it was in great condition. Like this really nice bright red on the inside. Um, and no flaws that I could see anywhere. Um, of course, it's vintage, so uh, you know it's going to be smaller than than what they say. 
Um, so so the, the tag says extra large, but it fits like a large. And so that's how I list my things. If anyone's wondering, I'll, I'll say what the actual measured size is in the title, but I always make sure to disclose. Plus I have my measurements uh, right here for people to see. Now, um, maybe I paid two bucks for this. Like I said, uh, I sold it. Somebody sent me an offer. You can see I have it listed for $69.99. Somebody sent me an offer for $64. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder, should I give it to him for $64? I mean, that's a pretty good offer. <laughs> so I sold it for $64. So. You mean you didn't have it listed for $69.99 and someone offered you $3? Because that's that's my usual <laughs> that's, offers. That is the, that is the, the usual generally. Uh, I've, I've take, I showed Katie there the other day. I've taken to responding to those offers. And now I always respond. I don't decline unless they keep offering something ridiculous then I will uh, decline out of annoyance mm -hmm. however when somebody offers me something that is absolutely asinine on a price like like more than 50% off type of thing I was back oh I'm sure that must be a typo I'd be happy to accept a reasonable offer should you choose to offer make an offer again you wait you waste so much time doing that because you, you let it <laughs> get under your skin passive-aggressive I know but I'm just like I'll just either counter or decline I don't bother with words with annoying words. I don't bother with words. No, I don't, I don't need any words. Or like they'll send me a message when it's like there's an offer system in place. They'll send me a message that says, will you take 15? And I just reply, nope. I don't need an explanation. Mm -hmm. All right, next up, what do you got? There, this oh, was this another, is the other quilt. This is the other quilt that went, uh, this sold for the 11696. I will say both of these quilts, by the way, this one was listed a day. The previous one was listed maybe a week, if that. Uh, paid seven, maybe seven dollars for this one, maybe even closer to six or so, because this was a lighter weight one. Uh, one was from the 60s, one was from the 90s. That's the weird thing about it, is they went to the same person. However, this is a handmade quilt, which actually deserves the higher price. It's handmade, it's beautiful, it's nice fabrics, the whole thing. I love rescuing those. The previous one was machine made, just sold well, in the 90s. And I, and I think this is where, this is why you are the goat, as Ryan and Allie say, the greatest of all time when it comes to, like, because it's like, this is one of those things, it's like, how do you even teach this? It's not, it's not like you're telling people, oh, go get this brand, go look at this, that brand. This is like a, a freaking handmade homemade quilt well sometimes but, i ask my friend barbara i'll ask barbara in the chat for the for the quilting pattern because sure. sometimes i i don't i mean yes i can look them up i'm sure they're guides but she's a quilter so she knows off the top of her head as does Teresa. but that's when you're listing it as far as like being at the bins and being like i'm oh, gonna buy this. grabbing it yeah, yeah i just... mean i can always tell when they're like hand tied and hand sewn and the different types of fabrics and i can tell by the type of fabric and the type of design and stitching pretty close to what year it is it's just like clothing for me yeah I can tell you what decade something is from based on the type of fabrics that it's used. pretty cool and then you make a freaking hundred and sixteen dollars and ninety six cents on it it's ridiculous guys see Barbara says that's a nine patch didn't know that wasn't listed in the title still sold go. in a day there you go pretty good all right uh, I'm all about the vest this week hey crystal do you recognize this one so I picked this up at the bins as well uh, we always tell you guys always pick up anything that has to do with rodeo does not have to be vintage this is from 2011 uh you still in my water mm -hmm. um this is from 2011 i don't care it's cool um now this is a uh, from the south point the um casino here because that's where they uh the rodeo comes they have like a whole nfr PBR, i've never seen it shit. but i guess it's all the stables and everything are all underground like it never occurred to me to think like Oh, where do they even keep the horses? And then somebody says something. Climate controlled underground. Yeah, it's all underground. It's so freaking weird. I, I, we need to like sneak down there, go down there sometime. I just want to check it out. I don't want to go to the rodeo. You want to go? Want to go pet the horsies? That would be nice. Okay. Uh, anyway, so South Point embroidered on the back, and then on the front, you can see it has the uh, NF NFR um, Wrangler NFR Las Vegas. Now, here's what's interesting about this vest. It had a guy's name embroidered over here. Let me see if I can. It had somebody's name embroidered. Um, On and the then, right chest area. Yeah, the right chest area. And I was like, I'm going to totally like cut this name out of here because I'm like, it just, I felt like it just took it away from the cool value. It wasn't a cool name. It wasn't like Dwight. Yeah. Dwight. And so I had my little my, like my little seam ripper thing that I was using to like try and get the name out. And I slipped. And this, uh, this is basically, it's practically like a felt material. And it's sliced. You can see right here, it's sliced right through it. So then this sat for a while until I had a chance to give it to Crystal. And Crystal sewed it for me. And, you know, I disclosed. I, I said that, you know, you can see this here. And you can see there's a little um, seam right All here. All they got to do is put another patch over it. would have been, it's perfect. Yeah, it would have been fine. Should have given you one of my American Flags patches. And come on, NFR and America, that would have gone fine. But it's a really cool vest. Uh, somebody uh, offered me $65. And I was like, okay. 
and or maybe I might have sent out an offer, whatever. Sold for sixty five bucks. No big so deal. So before you change this over, I just want to, one of the nice things about the fact that you and I are both listing. Well, I guess me specifically, I'm sourcing three times a week at least, and I'm trying to source around a hundred items a week. And what's nice about it is I'm getting everything listed within a week. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'm not getting listed as quickly are the hard goods because that's what I do. Right. So it does take me a lot longer. But in any case, um, it's nice to be able to see stuff that I've purchased well, like within the last week or so already sold. Like that yeah. makes me happy. It's awesome. Um, it definitely does feel like it's like, okay, now we're like, we're in the cycle, which I don't mind it. You, I feel like you get burned out. I'm getting frustrated and burnt out a little bit. I'm not going to lie. quicker than I do. Whereas I'm like, man, I could sourcing do this every day, days, all day. Sourcing three days a week is a lot. Uh, sourcing enough to be able to clean and process 75 to 100 items a yeah. week for my lister is a lot. I'm constantly doing and laundry. And then also, of, yes, constantly doing laundry. And then, and then of course, the hard goods. Then I have to do a full day of photography myself, which we all know I hate just for the hard goods, but I can't get those listed in a day. So it's like I'm trying to get 20 to 30 items listed a day every day, and it's it's happening, but it's a, it's a, it's a trudge right now. Yeah. And that was not my norm before. It is. For like the last two years, I've been, we've been maintaining my business. I've been maintaining yeah. my business and it was a little easier. I like, I like routine. So for me, it's like, I love it. It's like, okay, now the next thing we're going to do this and then we got to do that. And it's like, I, I've got like 30 more things I can list before I take my next set of photographs. I already have, you can see back behind us, the, the rack back there that already has some of the stuff uh, that I'll be photographing next. Um, I like that constant cycle. It's really fun for me. And I am, you know, we've mentioned this before. I love that Vicki and I both are kind of on the same page when it comes to death piles. We both like to have our stuff listed. We do not want it sitting around. Profit pile, we, yeah. money mountain. So it, I love it when stock. we're in the cycle. Sandy was calling it back stock. I don't <laughs> care whatever you call it. Whatever yeah. it is, just get your shit together and, you know, at least force yourself to list more than you buy. That's. Yeah. That's the key. Or if you're going to have a back stock, but be consistently listing, you know, it's like, yeah. So anyway, all right, let's get back. We're going to end up having a long show today because we keep yapping, but. I know. Sorry, guys. Uh, next chat for you. Chitty chatting. What you got? Liz says, quit attacking me. <laughs> oh, stop, Liz. You go in spurts. You don't have that much of a death pile. No. Uh, and if you, you, unless you look in her, her shower in her downstairs basement. Well, and Liz does bust out the listings just because mm -hmm. she goes through cycles where she's like, I just bought 500 more things. Oh, now I'm going back for another car load. She still is like consistently getting listings out. Even if it's not daily, it gets yeah. done. All right. What do you got here? Okay. So I actually showed this in a haul video Very last recently. week, yeah. last week, probably the day that we, we picked it up. It was shipped off on Monday, last Monday to my lister. And I haven't even gotten it back from her. It comes back tomorrow. So she picks up and drops off on Mondays. And uh, it, I, I start listing her items on Friday because I'm not going to ship until Monday. So I, if they're not physically in my hands, um, I listed this Friday night. It sold Saturday morning for full price, $129.95. Wow. Awesome. This is a, a dollar pickup at the bins. Um, we've talked about Dixon before. I think most people know that this is a brand to keep an eye out for. They do not all sell for that, but their collabs, especially the collabs that are a year or two mm -hmm. or more older, they sell very well. And that actually surprised me that it sold that fast. I see Mikey Bags of Bunny in the chat. Um, I also see Alexis is here. I love that we're getting to see uh, Alexis so so frequently. It makes me happy. Um, all right, let's go to the next one. Okay, if you guys remember this. So first of all, I realized I went on to Etsy recently and I realized that I had, you know, they have with their e... Well, I can't think of the words. Their Etsy ad campaigns, you basically set up a budget. It's like uh, you pay per click. It's stupid. I hate it. Um, once upon a time, they worked really well, and then it kind of just crapped out. I didn't realize I was still budgeting $2 a day, which means like $60 a month I was spending on, You're wasting on Etsy, Etsy ads. ads. And I went and I looked, okay, how much did I spend? I spent $60, and I only sold like... 100 it was like 140 dollars uh were from etsy ads in the last month and i'm like that's ridiculous and i looked at it for the last year you guys it's embarrassing it was like i had spent like 700 dollars on etsy ads and made like 
$1,700. Ridiculous. I don't pay for the Etsy ads anymore. Yeah. I stopped a couple years ago. So I got rid of them completely. And then I thought, I'm going to do like one week where I usually do like month long. Every month I do like a new sale and I just do 10% off. And I decided to do uh, just one week at 20% off to see what it did to my sales. So far, nothing other than I don't see like a huge uptick or anything like that. I'm just getting less money for my um, stuff, but whatever. <laughs> but if you remember this uh, shirt, I picked up at the bins. It's a really cool, nice, heavy Polo Ralph Lauren rugby shirt, but the collar was super yellow. Well, let me tell you, you I scrubbed it, you washed it, did not have much luck. So I would have priced it a lot higher, but because of the neck, I was like, Ugh, and so I put it up for a cheaper price. And guess what? It sold within like a week, thirty nine at nineteen. Weird amount there, but that's... well, two XL is a good size. It is. So I think you would have done well even without the issues with the. I think you probably could have priced it a little higher, but maybe. But it's just. I mean, as long as gross. you disclose in the in the content, yeah. you know, I've scrubbed this, I've cleaned it, it's been stain stain treated, it's just a set in stain, and you yeah. can't see it. When it's I on know, a but it's gross because it's like it is a gross. stain on the shirt is one thing. Yellow collar, all you're thinking it's like the dude that wore this. Like, was, that's his sweat, like around. <laughs> it's disgusting. So I just don't. Th whatever. I just wanted, yeah, I wanted to get rid of it. All, all right, right, next up for you. Fair. So uh, these sold uh, fairly quickly. I think I didn't have these listed that long. Just a few months. These are uh, what what you see there. I've got my little wee. Mm -hmm. photos of <laughs> crystals one of crystals last uh, batches of listings for me that's how i take um, pictures of my pants too thanks but to these are uh what you see there so they're wide leg they're a bell bottom flare they're vintage late 70s probably might even be on the cusp of early 80s you see the made in hong kong there uh but they were um they've been altered somewhere so like i have that like the waist and the leg hems have been altered like they, i think it was taken in at the waist and then the leg hem was altered, but all of that stuff is disclosed, and they sold. They sold pretty quickly. That's awesome. One twenty nine ninety five, and I love them. I love them. I wish. I'm sorry. I'm a chunky girl, right? But I wish sometimes that I was so skinny with those little skinny legs because I would love to wear this style clothing, and it just does not look good on somebody with curves. But I still love it. Yeah. All right. Next up for me, I've got this uh, Levi's shirt. Man, I've been selling the Levi's uh, denim and like uh, Western shirts and all that kind of stuff and jeans. I don't know. It's like who the frig are you? I know. It's like you uh, stole my closet. Yep. Levi's l loves me these days. It's great. Um, and this one was, you know, it's it's worn and faded. You can see from these pictures, like it's not like in the most amazing condition. Um, <laughs> Archie says sharing collar DNA is not my cup of tea. Yeah, no, it, it's pretty flipping mm, gross. Mm, yep. Um, you can even see it's got like bleach spots on it, uh, and I still sold it for fifty five ninety nine. This is uh, one of the ones that's sixty nine ninety nine, and I had twenty percent off. So, guys, I paid like a dollar, dollar, well, probably closer to like two dollars for this shirt, dollar fifty two dollars for the shirt, and sold it for fifty nine ninety nine. It's maybe been listed for a few weeks. All so, right. We're going to try to speed these up just a little bit. Sorry, We're guys. Trying. Um, anyway, I bought this in Colorado. Do a shot, Kristen and Liz. I bought this in Colorado on my last Colorado trip. I don't think I got this at the bins, so I probably bought this at an ARC thrift store. Now, it was either purchased in last, last October or in January. I'm not sure which. Could have been either. Uh, but I paid $7 or less for it. So... Uh, it sold. It took a while to sell, but I knew it would. This is also a very specific type of, of, of item, but it sold for the price you see there, one seventy nine thirty six, and the buyer is very happy to get it. Wow. Um, you know, it's nineteen fifties. Uh, it's it was very very well made, but you can see the fading in the in the sham, chamois fabric, which is like the it looks denim. It's not denim. You can see the fading there, and then you can see in the waistband. Um, that's how you can tell by the construction, the age of something. Scroll down to the last photo. That's the inside waistband. Oh, handmade? Yeah. So yeah. look at this, guys. Look at these numbers she gets for her, for freaking homemade, handmade stuff. It's ridiculous. And I just want to say, uh, everybody's coming to hang out with us today. I, I'm loving it. I don't it. know who put out, the, see... uh, who put out the, <laughs> the bat symbol, but I see Tiffany thrifting yep. vegas i don't think tiffany's ever been on our, sh on our channel uh, i think live. she's i think she's I popped know. in like once or twice before i think you're incorrect it's um, nice but, to see that little face yes nice to see you tiffany thanks for dropping by i appreciate and it and it does look like tiffany's going to be coming to our meetup she on... hit a 100k 
Did you know oh, that? Oh my good. I, I knew just, she was about to. I knew I, I saw, saw that her, post. I saw her post when she was like 10 away and so then I went and looked at um her channel and I was like she did it. She did it, my god. Congratulations. Yes, yeah, very very cool. Well deserved. Well deserved. She puts out some great content and mm -hmm. we all know everybody loves the accent. Yep. Um all right, next up, guys, I did it again. I did it again. I'm not going to say oops, though. Look, I sold a Dickies uh, jacket. Vicky gives me these. If she finds them at the bin, she gives them to me because she gave up years ago. This is not even a recent thing. No. Nope. For years, this has been happening. Anytime I list a Dickies jacket, one of these Dickies jackets, they sell. I have no problem selling them. Uh, Vicky has one, and it'll sit in her store for months. I can't and... give the shit away. It's the same damn thing. I cannot. I mean, I could stand on a street corner with a sign saying free, <laughs> free, and nobody would take it. Nobody wants it. This one actually went to Switzerland, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, but, yeah, I think I had it listed for maybe a week or two. It was not up for very long. Um, and these are pretty lightweight, so I maybe paid a couple bucks too, fit, too fitty for it. Too fitty. Uh, sold for fifty five ninety nine. It went international, so they paid for shipping, so that was fantastic. Um, but seriously, I, I love telling Vicky I sold another Dickies jacket because she always, uh, it makes her mad. Ridiculous. <laughs> so ridiculous. So, uh, uh, all right, next up for you. Next up, this is actually, I just wanted to talk about this. This is another item that I picked up at the bins. It is heavy. It's about five pounds. I do love vintage leather goods. Vintage leather goods are made unlike nothing that is made today. Uh, I had this listed not very long, maybe a couple of months. Sold for the price you see there, $67 and change. It was on sale through my store. What's fun about it is that it actually sold to, sold to Australia. So the buyer paid $80 shipping, didn't even blink. $80 shipping, calculated shipping. It's wow. about five pounds going to Australia. I won't pay $80 because we do get discount on the shipping. So I actually probably will make another $10 mm -hmm. on, uh, on the shipping cost as well. So like... $75, it probably cost me seven or $8 at the bins, and it wasn't listed very long. I Again, leather goods and handmade leather goods and vintage leather goods, there's nothing like them. Well, and that's the other thing, because they got rid of the linens at the bins, uh, those bins, were, that was where they would put purses and hats and belts and scarves and things like that. I don't know if I, I, I've seen some of it kind of mixed in with the not other much. stuff, but not much. So accident. we don't know what's happening to it. It's, yeah, it's really I don't know where it's about. How we're gonna, so how will I ship that? I'm going to bubble wrap that and then put it into a large poly mailer and ship it that way. I'm not going to add weight by putting it in a box. It's not necessary. I will double bag the poly mailer and put some bubble wrap around it just to protect the edges and the hardware from scraping through the, um, the poly bag. Mm -hmm. So very cool. I see your most recent, uh, uh, review. I love my Tom Clark gnome. Very well packaged and arrived quickly. Very nice. All right. It's a good thing that that's a good one. I know. I know. Sometimes I don't have good ones. <laughs> all right. Next up, I have this. Now, uh, not all these prices are correct because um, because I have the 20% off sale, it's like it doesn't, it, it's just already sold under a different sale. It's coming up the wrong amount. This actually sold, uh, it wasn't on sale at all. It sold in like the one day I didn't have a sale going. So it sold for $69.99, not the $55.99 you see there. Um, this is just a sweatshirt that I paid like maybe uh, 10 bucks for and uh, sold it for $69.99, not $55.99. Um, and this is just an Indiana um, Hoosiers sweatshirt, not even a very exciting one, um, And but it's on this the Russell Athletic uh, sweatshirt, which is, I think, a really good, I like them a lot, like the quality of uh, the sweatshirts. They are, they're really nice. So just as nice as Champion, as far as the uh, construction and how the thickness and how nice mm -hmm. they are. So keep in mind, again, this is just a little bit of a teaching moment for those of you that don't know. Obviously made in the USA, Russell Athletic is, is a good indicator that it's vintage, but when you're looking at the R that is made up of the, um, the eagle's head, when you can or actually see see it that it's a hawk or an eagle's head when you can see the eagle that's an indicator that it's vintage russell athletic yeah. the new russell athletic just has a red squiggle that it's not a bird yeah although now i mean who knows because now we're into the y2k but for sure when you see the eagle or the hawk whatever it is it for sure is vintage mm -hmm. um, i think it's an eagle's head i don't know where you're getting a hawk from i don't know because that's what hawks look like too it looks like a bald eagle head you don't know you right. don't know what's this this doll, poor thing, has is having a bad hair day, but uh, picked her up at the bins as well, so probably paid three or four dollars. And again, I love vintage dolls, I love creepy dolls, but clearly you can see this this girl had some issues. She's having a bad hair day. What I like about picking up the dolls that are of color is because the vintage dolls were not there weren't as many created that were not Caucasian dolls. 
okay? So little girls that grew up wanting a doll that looked like them did not have as many options. So I always pick up vintage dolls that are dolls that look like they're Hispanic or Latino or, or African American dolls because they always sell very well. And this happened to be one that sold. It sold for $75 plus the buyer paid $12 shipping. And uh, they were very happy. They actually sent it as a gift, which means that this is probably for someone that wanted one when they were a little girl. That's very cool. I like it. All right, next up, uh, again, this is the incorrect price. This one was sold during my 10% off sale. So this actually sold for $89.99. This is a t-shirt I've had for about a year. Um, I bought it from Jesse, Yesterday's Fits, and I know happen to know that he bought it. He had a couple that he had bought from somebody else on Whatnot. Um, so he bought it, and then I bought it from him, and then it sat for a while. And and, I, and thus is the circle of the vintage mm, t-shirt. Yeah, world. I think I've gone as low as like fifty dollars um, on offers, but this this is one of those shirts where it's like I I feel I love it too much to like let it go for too cheap. Uh, you can see it's got like the puffy prints and everything. Um, so when it finally sold for eighty nine ninety nine, not seventy nine ninety nine, I was very happy about it. But I paid like fifteen bucks for it, and it's just a really fun snack tea, as I say. Um, so I love it. I love yeah. it. All right, next up for you. Ooh, All right. I love this one. This was a bins find that I yoinked out of the bins and hid this real fast to make sure nobody snagged it out of my car. I'm and I don't so usually jealous. do that. But this was one of my favorite finds and still is one of my favorite finds that I've got at the bins. I talk about this brand, Miller, Miller, Miller. I've actually had a few items by them, but they do a lot of vintage 70s and 80s um, sweaters primarily. And there are these fun patterns. Well, this was one that has, it's a horse pattern, right? So it's missing a couple of the buttons. I'm actually going, I have a whole bag full of... Um, those wooden wrapped buttons that are mm -hmm. vintage, I'm gonna actually just send them in the pockets uh, for the customer to replace if they wanted, they can replace them all that way. But it sold for 187.46. That crazy. was my with sale missing price buttons. with missing buttons because you know what? You're gonna you can replace buttons. Look how cute it is. It's really Wee! nice. So it didn't take that long to sell. It's had a lot of interest on every platform from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. I have sent offers as low as 165 on eBay. No no takers, but. Uh, yeah, it sold early. Uh, yeah, they sold yesterday, so I'm super happy Very with cool. that one. All right, and then I had one sad single little Depop sale. Uh, I actually um, sold it for $40. Uh, went back and forth with a buyer. Sold it for 40 but I got this from uh, the bins, so I paid maybe a dollar, and it says, this is a firefighter, Mount Charleston firefighter t-shirt, and it says, we go to hell so you don't have to. Um, I love the graphic on this. I think it's really cool. And I really didn't have this for too long. It's, maybe it's been up for like a week or sorry, a month or so. Um, and sold it for $40. On, That's pretty cool. Yep. On the old, uh, on the old Depop, Depopper. The old Depopper. Um, anyway, so that's it for our sales highlights for last week. We did run over time. We, we've, been, we've been pretty chatty today, but we are not going to rush through the final part of our show because I think it is really important that we stick with this um, talking about our goals and the things that we accomplished in the last week. Um, I will say, and then setting our goals for, for next week. So please guys feel free to chime in, share your own, um, results, like results, share results from, from week. Yeah. From the previous week or chime in with what your goals are for the mm -hmm. coming week. Uh, put it out there, speak it out into the universe. Yep. Make it so, uh, so my goal, I've, I've stayed pretty much like set at having 50 items, um, being listed a week as my goal. I think it's, it's achievable. And if I have a great week where I'm able to do a lot more than fantastic, but at least hitting that 50 goal. So like this week, I felt like I was really busy. Uh, I felt like I didn't have enough time to focus on my business, but I still managed to do 55 listings. So I feel really good about that. Uh, my other goal, big goal has been like to get the rest of my stuff up in Poshmark and I failed miserably. I just haven't had the time. I need to make the time because I'm getting behind on all my cross posting. And so um, I just really need to do that, especially now that I've sold a couple things today on Poshmark. I'm like, I want more stuff on there. I think I have like seven, 800 listings on there, which means I'm only like halfway there to getting the rest of the stuff I want to put on there. Um, and then we had the goal together that we have put up at least two of the sourcing videos, which we did get, we did complete that goal. Plus we did an additional live. And the all day bins challenge was that this no, week? No, that was, that was this last week. We had, we had two pre-record videos mm -hmm. and one additional live show. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's it. 
for my goals for what I did this last week. How about you? So my goals uh, were obviously this, the videos along with you and the sourcing day. I did not make the all day bins challenge for those of you that have not watched it. Go back and watch it. It's pretty interesting. However, uh, yeah, I can't do all day. F that. My back was killing me. It was hot. <laughs> Wasn't worth it. Good. People, no, just no, just no. I can't do it. I can't do all day. I like to do my two, two and a half hours in and out, fill a cart, get the F out, and come home and get it over with. Um, so I did go to the bins three times this week. One of them was my half a day, not all day. Uh, we did our videos. We did three videos. And then we, my goal was to get 150 items listed. And I did. I got 157 items listed. Whoa! So I did make my goal this week. Uh, I, I did not cross post anything. So that is also my issue. I do have someone that I pay my friend Robin that does cross posting for me virtually. She lives in Florida. She has a pinched nerve or slipped disc mm -hmm. or something awful. And she hasn't been able to do that for about a month. So I'm very much falling behind on the, um, on the cross posting. However, I do have my bot that I use for, um, at least for Macari and Poshmark that ends in, you know, delists and relists uh, items that are more than 30 days old. So I am still having some activity on those yeah. accounts, but not enough, not enough. Right. They, you need new things. So I got to get that done. Uh, it's funny because, so Kristen says, all day bins challenge every day. Oh, no, Jesus, no. No, it's too much. Good it Lord. It, it's a, it, we found with the way our, our bins are set up, we have to watch the video, but uh, yeah. And then, and then Laura said, all day bit the bins sounds like punishment, not fun. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm loving seeing people's goals. Uh, Kristen's goal, one bins trip, two videos, one whatnot. Start cross posting and getting 25 listed. All right, good girl. That's good. Crystal. I has, hate the whatnot. So I'm there. that's out of the equation for me. Yep. Crystal says one video, 150 listed and cross posted. No sourcing this week. 150 um, listed and cross-posted. And mind you, amazing. she doesn't have someone doing listings for her anymore. No. But she definitely has way more time now that she's not doing them for me. Well, she, so I suppose there's that. <laughs> she recently did, I think she regularly does like the dollar day. At, yeah, no, she's yeah. been filling the cart with the dollar day stuff for so sure. So she has the, the stuff to do. So as far as this next week goes, we're leaving for a couple of days. I'm still going to stick to my 50. I think I can still do it. I have 25 items still to list from my... Um, my last photo sesh and then I got to take more pictures. I think even though I'm going to be out a couple, a few days, I think I can still do the 50. So I'm going to stick to the 50. I'm going to be realistic and, and know that there is no way I'm going to get the rest of my stuff um, cross posted to list or to uh, Poshmark. So I'm not even going to try to like set that goal. Let's just say I'm going to try to get at least another hundred over onto Poshmark, um, be a little bit more realistic. Uh, we have one video that's already going to be up, so we should still mm -hmm. be able to do two videos. We should be able to do a video while we're there. So I, my goals this week, it's not going to be 150 listed, but it should be 100 listed. I do have some in my draft bank, um, and I should be able to get up 10 a day at least while we're gone to keep it consistent. Um, I'm hoping that Robin is ready to come back and start doing some cross-posting again. I'm mm -hmm. not sure how she's feeling. Um, cause I desperately need the cross posting to, to be happening and it's just not going to happen if I have to do it. That's why I outsource certain things and I know I can't get everything done myself. Um, we will probably hit the bins at least one time toward the end of the week, if not twice, but I do hope to do a day of sourcing while we're in California. So hoping to maybe hit Palm Springs because yeah. I do like Palm Very Springs funny. and we're going to be right near there. The town that our friends live in is near Palm Springs. It's not too far. It's just a tiny town by itself though. Yeah. So I see Barbara. I'd like to see that. Made her goal uh, 50 for last week, and it's 50 again. Emily, so Emily says, it sounds low, but she'd like to list 25 to 50 this week. I don't Let's think say it's low. Not, it's not. First of all, you know, like, I'll say, oh, I did 55, and then Vicky b pops in like she did 157. Um, I'm doing mine by myself, uh, but also um, I'm a little bit slower on that. I know Vicky, she's faster even when she's doing her own stuff, but she does have help as far as like getting those, mm -hmm. getting a lot of the drafts up. I do have someone clothing. that is doing the drafting, the photographing and the drafting of all of the clothing items. There's so, no world where she's doing 150 of her own listings from, hell from no. start to end I, Hell no, week. that's never going to happen. Uh, for so me, Crystal, God bless you if you're going to try to yeah. do that for yourself. I can't do it. For me, um, I mean, it'd be a great week if I sold 35 items in a week. So nowadays, uh, so to me, I'm like, as long as I'm listing consistently and I'm listing more than I'm selling, because I am trying to build up my inventory. Oh, 
I'm do, I'm, I'm listing happy. like three times what yeah, I'm selling for you frig's sake. This is why I'm busting at the seams. <laughs> However, I do have a plan in place. I do have a couple of ideas. I am going to be selling live in a vintage clothing community mm-hmm. starting it. soon, uh, probably somewhere sometime this month, the month of August. I'm hoping that goes well because it is a targeted community of buyers and sellers of vintage clothing. It's not whatnot. It is just a it's a cultivated, um, curated boutique type mm-hmm. of group. Uh, so I am hoping to get into that and do that at, at least once a month. And what I'll be willing to do is get rid of, um, you know, I'll throw a couple of really good items in there and get some higher dollars, but I think I can do quite a lot in the 30 to $35 range. So, um, I think that's what I'm going to do. And Crystal says, I usually do 130. Now that she's not listing for me, she can get 130 done a week. That's impressive. That's, that's impressive. That's crazy. Um, well, I mean, before when even when she was doing the most for you, she was still listing her own stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, and hi, Laura, our friend Laura, my '80s baby, doesn't get to pop in the chat very much at all Hello. anymore because she's so busy with her yeah. whatnot world. Yeah, Rita says she's left us for whatnot. Rita May says that we make her want to go to the bins. Yeah, we'll definitely do some more bins challenges. And uh, now, as far as like draft banking and stuff like that, um, Alexis had talked about that. I'm not going to be listing or making anything go live while we're gone, but I am. I, I have a lot of stuff in my inventory right now that's just recently hit in July, hit the, the full year mark of being listed. So I am probably going to do like 15, 20 items a day, ending them, do sell similar, change some pricing on them so that um, hopefully, you know, maybe I can get them to move. So I'll still keep the activity, just not any brand new listings. But um, all right, I feel like we only went 10 minutes over and we were pretty chatty today. It's true. So, I mean, this is better than our two-hour shows, but I think. We had a lot of people join us. We were up to like 125 people, which is really, really good for us uh, as of late. So we really appreciate everybody who came and hung out with us, some people who've been around uh, in our audience for a long, long time. and some people From day who are, one. Some people who are new. We love having new people uh, join us. This is our regular Sunday show. This is what we do every week for Sundays. And then we do our hauls. Uh, so the, the haul video is going to go up um, tomorrow. So we did make some changes to kind of play around with how we're doing the haul video. So we would love to get feedback on that. When you guys see that pop up in your notifications, make sure you do have yeah, comments, leave some comments, please make sure you do have your notifications turned on for our videos, but um, please let us know. Cause we're trying to get, you know, get that sweet spot where, you know, it's the most enjoyable to the most people um, kind of the way that we're doing but it. But also make informative. It fun. Yeah. We want to be able to be, hopefully be teaching people, but also having some fun. Because our um, job as 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 content creators, and I, I use that term very loosely because we are really not, and we don't call ourselves that, uh, but we do have this channel, and we do have this little platform, and we do like to see it grow a little bit, but our job and our goal is always to help teach. Mm-hmm. We want to help other people be the best resellers that they can be, because elevating your selling skills helps elevate all of the platforms for all of us. Absolutely. And it keeps the buyers coming back. Absolutely. So that's it. All right, guys, uh, we very much appreciate all of you, and we will see you soon. We'll see you next week live, at least. Good luck hitting all those goals, and uh, sell some stuff, man. All right, let's do it. All right. Bye. Bye.